iCoolCore is back again, this time with the R2 Max, which they describe as a next generation firewall platform with two 10 gig and two 2.5 gig network connections and more storage capacity. But is it good enough to be your next hardware firewall? Well, let's find out. This video is brought to you by Home Lab Gear. My home lab was a mess, so I designed and created a variety of different products to help me manage and protect all of my sensitive gear, and they're available to you too. Tackle the storage of your countless 3.5 inch mechanical drives, organize all of your random 2.5 inch consumer and expensive enterprise SSDs, protect all of your delicate NVMe SSDs, store all of your DDR DIMMs and those easy to misplace SODIMs, and collect and protect all of your expensive SFP transceivers. You can get all of these and more right now too, just head over to homelabgear.shop or check for a link in the description and get your home lab organized. Hey there home lovers, self hosters, IT pros and engineers. Rich here, iCoolCore's R2 Max is definitely a departure from the cube-shaped R1s and R2s that came before it. Marketed to be used as a firewall, it's also packing some serious hardware in terms of connectivity. Full disclosure, iCoolCore did send us this unit for free, but this is not a sponsored video, and as always, my opinions are my own. With the disclosure out of the way, let's dig into the details. The R2 Max measures in at 157 millimeters wide, by 118 millimeters deep, by 40 millimeters high. The R2 Max, like the R1 and R2 before it, is made entirely out of milled aluminum and has quite an impressive weight, with the fanless version weighing in at 1,050 grams or a tad over 2.3 pounds. On the front of the unit, we have two USB 3.0 Type-A ports and a single power button with an LED indicator that is plenty bright. Around the right side of the unit, we have a micro SD slot for expanded storage. On the back, we get a good look at the connectivity the R2 Max is packing. Starting on the left-hand side, we have two 10 gigabit base-T Ethernet ports backed by a Marvell AQC113C chipset, and directly next to those two, we have two 2.5 gigabit base-T Ethernet ports backed by the Intel i226-V chipset. 25 gigabits total connectivity from this little box is an amazing amount of network connectivity in such a small unit. In the middle, we have a standard HDMI 2.0 port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, and a barrel connector for power, which is a departure from the USB-C PD port you'd get on the Cubicle R2. Taking a look at the top, the entire top of the R2 Max is a milled aluminum heatsink with thick fins to passively cool the system. Don't worry, we'll take a look at the cooling in a bit. Flipping over the unit, on the bottom, behind two conspicuously labeled doors, access to the storage and RAM slots on the mainboard. Opening up the bottom access doors on the R2 Max, we find the system supports up to two 2280 M.2 NVMEs, and over under the RAM door, the unit features a single DDR5 SODIMM slot. As of today, the R2 Max has two different variants available to choose from. Our eval unit is running an N100 which features four cores, four threads, has a boost clock of 3.4 GHz, a base TDP of 6 watts, and is no longer available from iCool Core, being replaced by the N150 which is essentially the same CPU but with a boost clock that goes to 3.6 GHz. The unit is also available with an Intel Core 3 N355 CPU as well. The N355 features 8 cores, 8 threads, a boost of 3.9 GHz, and a max TDP of 15 watts. It's also important to note that the N355 version comes with active cooling for the unit. The base price for the R2 Max with an N150 CPU, no RAM, and no storage comes in at $309 USD, with the N355 unit with no RAM or storage coming in at $409 USD iCoolCore offers options for adding RAM and NVMe storage at the time of purchase as well. In regards to the change between the N100 that we have and the N150 that replaces it on their site, iCoolCore did reach out to let me know that the change in CPU was brought upon by Intel replacing the N100 for the 150, and effectively the only real difference is a slightly faster boost clock, and that's it. So we're going to continue testing this unit as if it's the same as the newer N150. Alright, so this unit has some pretty impressive connectivity and it's fanless, so how hot does it get? I'm going to run a stress test using S2E on the unit and point my thermal camera at it so we can see how hot this little system gets. Plus, thermal imaging is just super cool. And the answer is not bad at all for a passively cooled system. After a solid 10 minutes of running a CPU stress test, the system reached a maximum temperature of 96 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 and a half degrees Celsius. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this system is marketed as a firewall, and naturally, you'd run something like PFSense or OpenSense on a unit like this. 
But there's a big gotcha here that we need to talk about. That Marvel chipset that runs those two 10 gig connections isn't supported in FreeBSD, which is what PFSense and OpenSense are based on. What I'm basically saying here is that you really can't use it as a PFSense or OpenSense firewall. So I feel like calling this a firewall at all is a bit of a stretch. That being said, however, that chipset is supported in Linux. And as I said earlier, it runs Ubuntu and likely Windows just fine. This leads me to a bit of a conundrum here with this unit. I don't honestly know what to do with it. If you're gonna sell it as a firewall, but the two NICs aren't supported by arguably the two biggest free to use firewall software platforms out there, it doesn't really make much sense to call it a firewall. So let's just call it like it is. It's a mini PC with dual 10 gigs and dual 2.5 gig connectivity. And this is where I'm gonna get critical on the unit. Here's the problem. Without the support for the Marvel chipset, what you're essentially left with here is just a mini PC in a nice machined aluminum enclosure. And we can compare that to other mini PCs in the market to see how well it stacks up and see if it's worth the price. Let's take a look. This is the Mini's Forum UM760 mini PC. It features an AMD Ryzen 5 7640 HS CPU, 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and a one terabyte SSD, all for $410 shipped to your door. Sure, it only has one 2.5 gig network interface, but when you compare that to the R2 Max model with the N355 CPU, which costs $409 without RAM or an SSD, it really starts to show its lack of value. For example, have a look at the CPU comparison between the Intel N355 and the Ryzen 5 7640 HS. They're not even on the same planet in terms of performance with the AMD CPU beating out the N355 CPU in every category except power consumption. I am not trying to be unfair here to the R2 Max. If iCool Core would have gone with a different Ethernet 5 for 10 gig, then we'd be having an entirely different conversation about how well it filters packets and pushes data, not comparing it to your average mini PC. But because of those limitations, here we are. This is one of those times as a reviewer that I have to call things like they are and tell you that if you're in the market for a system to use as a firewall, then this isn't your system. And if you're in the market for a mini PC, well, this really isn't your system either. I hate to say this because iCoolCore's previous R1 and R2 cubes were innovative and good options as a firewall, but this is not. You let me know in the comments if you think I'm being unfair or if I'm being too hard on R2 Max's next gen firewall. And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. And if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. A special thank you to YouTube members. You guys help keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buying some of our swag. It all helps us keep making these videos. And now that you've finished watching this video, how about checking out this place over here of other great hardware reviews we've done in the past. If you're looking for your next great piece of hardware, we can help.